going to talk about one specific project because I have too many. So instead, I'm going to do a, a meta presentation about uh, side projects in general. So first of all, um, why should you listen to me? So I'm going to introduce myself and also talk about the projects that I've done before. So my name is uh, Sasha Grief. Uh, this is my blog. And I've done a couple projects. The first one is called uh, Patternify. And Patternify is a very simple uh, pixel pattern generator. So you draw your pattern here on the left, and it gets styled, and you can preview it here and download it or copy the CSS code. The second project um, I, I did is this one, the Toolbox. And the Toolbox is a collection of uh, all the small, little, useful apps and single page sites that you often come across that are hard to re remember. So the toolbox gives you a place to like centralize all of those tools. I was just on that today. Subtle patterns, I found. Oh, yeah, yeah. Subtle patterns is the most popular one. Yeah. Uh, sidebar is actually a project that I just launched uh, yesterday, and it's a, a list of the five best design links of the day. It's also a newsletter, so you can sign up and receive the links. So, um, first of all, the reason why should you start a side project? So, for me, there are a couple, couple of good reasons. Build a product. So, with a side project, you're in charge of uh, coming up with an idea. You're in charge of building it. You're also in charge of marketing it. So. Uh, it gives you uh, an occasion to try out lots of skills that you don't get to, to do in your day job. So it's like being your own CEO. Unless, of course, you are actually a CEO, then <laughs> I guess you already know. Also a good way to learn something new. So try out a new framework, try, try out a new language, or if you're a designer like me, try out a new font, maybe. Finally, get your name out there. Uh, I think this one is important too. Uh, if, if you build a simple side project, it's often easier to make it go viral and to have a lot of people see it uh, compared to your regular work. So next, let's talk about the idea. Uh, what makes a good side project idea? For me, it should be three things. Simple, specific, and special. Why simple? Uh, simple for me is the most important because um, large projects lead to procrastination. Uh, it's harder to find the time, it's harder to find the motivation. So my own rule of thumb is uh, try to go from idea to launch in 10 hours. And 10 hours might seem like a very short amount of time, but I find that if you really focus on something, you can achieve a lot in 10 hours. And this project is a good idea of a uh, good example of what I mean by keeping it simple. So this site, I don't know if you can see, but it lets you uh, manage your social network settings, such as uh, changing, changing your profile picture on Twitter. And the uh, obvious way for like a hacker or engineer to build such a project would be to use the Twitter API, uh, Facebook API authentication, but that's not what that guy did. All he did is you say, okay, I want to change my profile picture on Twitter, and then it gives you the link to Twitter. So Twitter slash settings slash profile. And it sends you to that URL. I think that's an interesting example of uh, finding the simplest possible way of solving that problem. The second one, specific. If you uh, succeed in solving a very specific need for a very specific target, then it makes it much easier to, to, for people to understand what your project is. My favorite example is this website called CSS Arrow Please. All it does is give you the code for CSS Arrows. But it, it does only one thing, but it does it very well. So uh, as soon as you arrive on that page, if you've ever looked for that code, then you, you know what the site does. And finally, special. So try to make your side project stand out and try to have fun with it. This example is a time zone converter. So if you're in Osaka, it gives you the time in San Francisco. 
But as you can see, it also looks uh, pretty nice. So just uh, with its visual design, it already stands out from the other options out there. Okay, that's the big question. Where do I find the time for my side project? So my answer to this is you don't find time, you make time. So what can you do to make time? Scale down, compromise, repurpose. Scale down. Again, I think keeping it simple is important. So if you can't increase the amount of time you have, you decrease the scope of the project. Go back to step one, go back to the idea stage and rethink how, how can I solve the same need but in a simpler way. Compromise. So um, you might have to sacrifice exercise or lunch or sleep, but remember you only need 10 hours, so just do that for one week, not longer. Finally, repurpose. That's something I try to do a lot, which is uh, use the work that you're already doing anyway and use that for your project. So a common example is open sourcing software. Uh, another idea might be writing an ebook about something that you already know about your day job. Okay, now, now let's talk about the execution. So how do you actually get started? This is the most important thing. Don't overthink things. Why is that? Because your brain <laughs> is a scumbag and your brain will try to find all the possible reasons why your project will fail, nobody will care, it won't work, so don't let it. Uh, try to get started before you can start second-guessing yourself. And uh, what I find is that getting over that first hurdle, that first hour of work, that's the most difficult part. Once you're in the project, once you get yourself started, uh, things go much smoother. This is a great example of uh, not overthinking things. This app, Spacebox, is a, a simple app that lets you pay, uh, pay people with Stripe, which is a payment gateway. But anyway, the important part is that the guy who did it, uh, did it in five days. So he had the idea, he went to work, and in five days he produced something, and then showed it to the world. And this way, I mean, five days is a fair amount of time, but it's not that much to get something out there and get real-world feedback. <laughs> <laughs> That's really distracting. But anyway, things you might think you need, but you probably don't. Those things include user accounts, server-side code, and a database. Why user accounts? First of all, people don't want to sign up for yet another thing. So uh, if you can avoid user accounts altogether, first of all, it will be easier for you to create your, uh, your app, and uh, people will also find it easier to use it. Server side, um, you can actually do a lot in JavaScript. So a lot of the time, you, you, you can find a way not to use any server side code, and from a performance standpoint, that's also good because it bypasses a lot of issues with servers. Finally, database. Uh, in some cases, you can even get away uh, without a database. So let me give you an example from one of my own projects, uh, Patternify. So with Patternify, I wanted to give people a way to share their patterns with each other on Twitter, Facebook, etc. So what I did is I don't know if you can see, but I'm actually encoding the pattern in the URL here. And uh, I then use bit.ly uh, to shorten that URL to make it easy to share. So, so you, you can't database. say there's no database. It's just not your database. <laughs> right. But at least I don't have to worry about the database. So uh, that's just one way you can try to uh, reduce the scope of the project. Features. Um, People are going to ask about for features, uh, user accounts, uh, profiles, uh, rankings, RSS feeds. You need to learn to just say no. And you have to keep things simple. Uh, otherwise, the scope just gets bigger and you never finish. 
Last part, <coughs> launching. A couple tips uh, for launching your project. First, get a domain. Uh, it's not very expensive, ten dollars, and uh, you get bonus points if you can use a weird TLD uh, domain like .io or .ck or something. Uh, tell a story. Um, if you can tell a story, like why you did this project, it's much easier for people to relate to it. For example, uh, oops, this is a, a sleep time calculator, and uh, the story is just that the guy had trouble sleeping, so he came up with this calculator to help him uh, get to bed at the right time. Finally, capitalize. Uh, if you can, it's great to get something out of your project. So it can be linking to your site or other projects, uh, asking people to follow you on Twitter, or sign up to a newsletter. If we go back to uh, the time zone converter, at the bottom here you can see that they're advertising their own paid app, which is a good way to capitalize on the attention and the buzz. So thank you for watching, and now go build your own thing. for questions or comments. Yes. Okay, so I was, um, how to see. So your project always starts like a static HTML, put it somewhere. Mm. But how to see, it, it will become bigger if it's good. So how to see, but you don't want to spend so many time because this is some blitz project. You don't want to spend money on installing server or something, something. So how you are doing, just how to see. Uh, growing it, it's fast. None of my projects have ever gotten that big yet, so <laughs> I guess I'll deal with it when I come to it, but personally I think it's acceptable to just put something out there and uh, assume that you know it's a side project. It's, I'm not gonna uh, put our money in it and keep growing it. <clears throat> You're allowed to just have something for fun on the side. So there's uh, people uh, in startups, they say that premature op optimization is the root of all evil, mm -hmm. so that means don't think, you know, don't think about what will happen when. Just launch it and then see what happens. I wanted to know what happens. So something. <laughs> <But> usually, <laughs> like, no. usually it doesn't happen. I mean, <laughs> it's a good problem to have. If if it gets that big, then you have a choice. You can, you know, it means that there is a demand for it. So you can think about uh, transforming it into a business, or you can just tell people that's just a side project. Uh, that's, that's what it is. How many ideas do you get? Like, what's your frequency for ideas that you at least think you know more than once uh, about? And then one a week. One a week. Yeah, probably. And then when you're working on a project, how do you suppress your desire? How do you suppress like distracting ideas? So uh, I, I don't suppress it actually. Uh, okay. Every good idea I have, I try to uh, at least take the first step. So for example, uh, I had a, the idea for a to-do app with uh, Jonathan. So the first step was. Uh, doing a mock-up and sending it to him. Yeah. And maybe nothing will come out of it, but at least I took that first step and, you know, I can get the ball rolling and maybe something will happen. Yeah. You, know, you said you talked about e-books? Yeah. Do you have some kind of like e-book strategy? Like uh, how it's yeah. sold out to e books Yeah, I uh, actually uh, wrote a very detailed blog post about that and did a podcast about that, so I can give you the, the address after. It would take too long to. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, for those who didn't know, I think you were ranked this week, or it was this week? It was ranked in the 20. Top 10. Top, top, top 10. 10, blog. 10 yeah. In Hacker News, the top 10 blogger, blogger yeah. with the most posts and yeah. points in Hacker News, in the whole Hacker News. Yeah. So can you make mm -hmm. this autograph? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I can earn about a. Well, hundred dollars a month with uh, an advertisement on my blog, so uh, I can't buy sushi with. That's only beautiful. How much time do you spend checking that your idea hasn't already been implemented? Uh, no time. Okay. Uh, you know, most of the time uh, you have to trust that you can do it better. Um, but even if it has been implemented, uh, people forget about ideas, so. You know, I'll come up with something, and then six months later, you can do the same thing. Everybody will have already forgotten about mine. So they'll be, hey, that's a 
Great new idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, something I read on your blog post, you just mentioned that side projects shouldn't be uh, money focused. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you ever been tempted to like pick an idea that you think has potential financially, economically? Um, so the reason I said that was not that there's anything wrong with making money. It's just that when you start uh, thinking about making money, the scope grows very fast. So uh, if, I, if I want people to pay me, they need user accounts, then, then I need a payment gateway, uh, I need uh, uh, SSL certificates. It just uh, bloats right away. So uh, that's why that's the main reason why I said not to think about money, because it will slow you down. That being said, if you have a way to make money without all those hassle, like selling a digital product maybe, or an ebook, then yeah, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs>